How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, today I've got some footage for you, some shallow water diving I did a few weeks ago. It's actually some footage, like I said, from a while back that I was kind of on the fence of releasing. I uh, didn't have much of a storyline to it, so I kind of was just sitting on it. But um, all of you reacted so well to the diving videos with the commentary and the deeper water that I decided this is actually some great footage uh, for that style of video with some commentary and whatnot, but it's just in really shallow water. I think, if I remember correctly, the deepest spots we were in were, I think, maybe 15 feet, 10 to 15 feet like that, but we had a, a banner day, tons of fish in the boat. Um, so I'm going to do a commentary style, just shallower water, similar fish. Um, hopefully you guys learn something. For those of you who can't dive as deep as, um, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing, the 60 to 80 foot stuff, uh, hopefully you learn something and uh, let me know what you think. And go ahead and hit the like button for the YouTube machine. Helps a ton, goes a long way. Helps me create more content and gets the videos out there. Check it out, guys. All right, guys. Like I said, um, this video is all pretty much shallow water, less than 15 feet. Everyone liked the, the last video with the commentary so much, I decided that I was going to use this footage and, and kind of run my thoughts over it like I did on the last one. I understand that everyone can't dive super deep, so here we go. This was literally the first spot of the day. Um, just happened to get super lucky. Jordan hopped in on the other side of the boat. I hopped in on this side and there happened to just be a mutton swimming by. Kind of on his way out, but he was still in range. So I waited till I got the right shot and I didn't stone him. Um, a lot of people think if you, they, uh, you'll see when I pull him up where I hit him, the fish is not actually dead. He's nerved. He just can't move. So in these situations, I still try to dispatch the fish as quickly as possible because that fish uh, was not dead. He just was pretty much paralyzed. Um, here's the next spot. Uh, I have seen a, a grouper go into this rock. And you can see right here, right there, you see where my flashlight is just under the muzzle of my gun. Um, I had already dove down and located this grouper before this first dive, so I knew exactly where he was. I keep that flashlight down straight in line with my shaft. So when I come around that corner, that grouper does not have time to spook. The second this flashlight hits his face, I know that's where the shaft is going, so I'm ready to fire. Um, I see a lot of people do, you know, in ledge hunting in some of the trips I run, where they go down and look in the hole first, not ready to fire, nine times out of 10, that grouper's gonna see you and spook before you can get your gun around. Um, I was familiar with this rock. I knew I was not pulling the fish out the opposite direction. So what I did was I pushed my shaft, you can see it on the bottom there. I pushed it through the rock. And right now you can't see what I'm doing, but my arm is in the rock. I'm getting my hands on the fish. Um, he's just on my shooting line now. So I'm pretty much getting my hands into his gills and I'm pulling him out of this other side because the hole was much bigger. Uh, I've actually pulled a grouper out of this rock before, so I was very familiar with what to do. Uh, you can see I get my hands on the fish, I get him out. So gun's going through one side, fish is going through the other. Uh, I don't want this fish to suffer. I hate it, I'm kind of a hippie, but um, I try to dispatch my fish as quickly as possible. He's still on my line. Right there, dispatched him. Uh, so pretty much unclip on this end, which is a nice feature of having those uh, quick release uh, pigtails, or some people use the, um, the clamp style, but you can see I come up with everything. That was a gorgeous fish, 10 feet of water. These big yellow jacks on the surface, they're right in front of you. Big yellow jacks on the surface. Water's crystal clear. This is a rock pile. There's more coming to your left. They're everywhere. He just shot. Got oh, one. he's going fast. He's twisting. <laughs> that was awesome. So that last video was actually of Will um, towards the end of the day. He didn't have a GoPro on, but got a nice shot on a big yellow jack. This is a similar school that happened to me earlier in the day. Uh, big school came in, got a good shot on a bigger one. These were all about, I think, eight to 10 pound yellow jacks. You can see that Goliath came out of nowhere. I was not ready for that fish. Um, took a quick stab at it. Luckily he missed. That would have been a wrecked shaft and a lost fish if he would have got a hold of that. Um, these are some pretty epic rock piles. You can see how big these rocks are. This is only in, like I said, 10 feet of water. And I'll say while searching for these groupers, um, especially the beginners, you haven't done this a lot, the biggest thing when shooting into rocks is making sure the fish you're shooting at is big enough. I can't stress that enough. Not a lot of things upset me, but taking small fish or um, 
killing small fish unnecessarily really upsets me. So if you if you know if you do get a light and you're looking at these fish, just be 100%. If you're not sure, it's probably not big enough. So do your best. Um, one of the ways you can see that Goliath under that rock. One of the ways I make sure is that I look at the the width of the tail, like the, the height of it, and then the the um, the thickness of the lips. But I've been doing it for so long, it's a little easier for me. This fish, I actually had a GoPro malfunction. Um, he was in one of those rocks. I found him with the light, uh, and he got curious and poked his head out, and luckily I got another shot on him. Went back to retrieve my yellow jack. So this is in the same area, similar rock. Uh, I saw a, a grouper swim into this rock. Sized him up, he was good enough. I had already done a couple of dives to get a good um, idea of how big he was. I knew that he was legal. Very tight hole, there's a lionfish in there. Uh, you can see again, I've got the, the, the light just under my muzzle, so when I'm lining up on him, there's actually a parrotfish in the way, so what I'm trying to do is kind of make some movement and get the parrotfish to <clears throat> excuse me, move. You can barely see the parrotfish there if you look close enough. He moved just enough over so I could get a shot in the uh, grouper's head. You can see for a split second there, when I'm shooting into a rock or up against a rock, I leave the shaft down there or push it forward to make sure the, uh, the fish comes past the flopper. This one was a really tight hole, so I really wanted to leave the fish down there and make sure that he did was in fact on the flopper and not just on the other side of the spear. So this is another, this is a really tough uh, shot actually. And you can't really see what I'm doing, but my hand's in the hole. What I'm trying to do is reach past the fish and make sure the flopper's behind him, which I did, I verified that he was there. And then once I verified that, I'm pulling uh, my hand across the front of his head to try and turn his head to get him to come out straight forward. A lot of times these groupers will flare their gills and kind of get all um, cockeyed in there and try to wedge themselves so you can't pull them out. But I turned his head. I typically never pull on a shaft like this, but I felt where the shot was and I knew that it wasn't going anywhere. So you can see once I turned his head, I was able to pull him straight out. It was a good holding shot. A um, little bit of gills, a little bit of mouth. That, there's a lot of hard bone and stuff right there. So that fish was not going anywhere. Another very nice group of shallow water. So this is a good lesson. Uh, this is my roommate Jordan. He doesn't spear nearly as much as me. Um, but we found a grouper. It was rocked up. Uh, he's got the light. You can see he's not on his trigger as he should be, but still that fish isn't going anywhere. It's a pretty small rock. So he lines up. He's got the light on him. He takes a shot. And this is the mistake that a lot of people make. You see he immediately starts to pull. And you can see it. the fish came off right there. You can see the shaft stop um, drumming. So when you're shooting a fish against the rock, he's gonna drum, shove the shaft forward so he drums past the flopper. If you pull immediately, it's almost always gonna come off. So I explained it again, actually the day of. Uh, the fish actually moved after Jordan put a shot on him and he kind of put himself in a really tricky spot. So um, Jordan wasn't comfortable getting a good shot on him. You can see this is a very, very tight hole. He was way up in there. Um, and I was able to, like I said, I call this an expert level shot. This is very difficult. Really tight, put a shot in him. Again, left the shaft down there, pushed it forward uh, to make sure he's coming past the flopper. So when they're backed up against a rock like that, I always leave the shaft in unless I know it came out the other side. And let him wiggle, because he'll wiggle himself past the flopper. And now what I'll do, I'll go in there and stick my hand in there and try and pull him past it. So again, another lesson there. Um, I guess I was in a teaching mood this day. <laughs> the fish is down there. I was very comfortable with that shot. I knew that when I took the shot, I shoved the shaft past him. I could tell he was already past the flopper. So I'm going down there and trying to get an idea of which side I'm going to pull him out on. This side is a little more open than the sh side that I shot him on. Um, and you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing the same thing, getting my hands on the fish, trying to pull him forward. You can see I've got the shaft. I know the fish is past the flopper, so I'm going to try and pull him out on the opposite side that I shot. Because it's a much bigger opening. And what I'm doing right there is I'm sliding him over. I got you know the shaft in his head, so I'm trying to move him over. 
You can see barely there, you saw the tip of the shaft. So I know the fish is on it. He's behind the flopper. Uh, get my hands on his gills again. Don't like him to suffer. The first thing I always do is try to dispatch him as quickly as possible. And it makes it easier to deal with the fish while he's uh, still rocked up and on the bottom. Just kind of getting my breath here. Very shallow diving. I love this. I'll do this diving all day. Um, a lot of decent fish in these depths if you know where to look and you know spend some time just getting some decent spots. Again, quick release. Use that and pull the whole thing through. This was actually the last spot of the day. There was grunts everywhere. Like this is a great spot for groupers. Um, my camera actually malfunctioned. I pulled one more black grouper off this spot that I did not capture. Um, but that was a great spot because I know the groupers eat grunts and that was loaded with bait. Happy box. Didn't leave 15 feet of water all day. I think we're gonna call it. Head back to the dock, get these cleaned up. Hard to leave, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, the deepest spot we hit today was 15 feet. We got what, two, four, six black groupers, two mutton snappers, and four big yellow jacks. These are all very nice fish. Uh, my point being, you don't have to be able to hold your breath forever to shoot fish. You just need to work on your hunting techniques and, um, you can be quite successful. This is a pretty spectacular haul. What was it? Eight hours of diving. We got out there about 10. It's six o'clock now, 6.30. Um, so, point, uh, that's my point. You don't gotta hold your breath forever. Hope you guys learned something maybe. Um, you gotta get these to the scales. As always, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you next time. Later. <laughs>